welcome back to Evil's Comics. This guy right here is Evil Mike, or Mike if you prefer, and I got a review for you today. Today we're going to be talking about Image Comics and Top Cow's Destiny Gate, issue number one. It is written by Ryan Cody, art by Christian DeBarra, colors by Simon Go, and letters by Troy Patera. Um, before we get started on this review, please like, comment, subscribe on this guy's channel right here. Hopefully you're enjoying what you're seeing. If you are, hit that like button. You know, maybe you want to hit that bell. Stay in tune with my reviews. I don't have a schedule, but that will keep you in tune. You know what I'm saying? All right, so before we get started, this is the Giuseppe Cafaro um, Walking Dead anniversary. It's for their 20th anniversary. It's also a connecting variant. There's, there's going to be um, a three-part connecting. I think the second one is in Antarctica, and the third one is in a book called Haunt You to the End, Antar Antarctica number four and Haunt You to the End, issue number five. Um, another backstory is while, like, right off the bat, you get the detail of the story and everything from this, but down here below, I noticed something when I was reading about the writers and artists and something, it says, based on the game concept by Paul Lamone. Um, I thought I was missing something. I thought there was already a game based on Destiny's Gate, so I went online, looked it up, and um, it, it is not a game yet. So there is a game in the works. This was uh, from Paul Leon, and he worked for um, uh, Bazaar, I think it is, uh, the same company who makes uh, Diablo and World of Warcraft, and he had pitched this idea, and they didn't take it. So. Top Cow and Image did. They turned it into a comic, and after the release of the comic, they do plan to turn it into a game. A uh, little backstory for you. So we start out, and at first the story was a little complicated. I didn't know what was going on. I have a little bit of the story from a synopsis, and that was about it. Uh, we're with this dude, Mitchell Slate. Um, he is a salesman. He's, his life is not going so great. Um, it starts out and he the whole book is talking about like you know everything compiling of bad decisions or good decisions and everything throughout history can get be basically compiled of really bad decisions you know all, but basically one dude making that bad decision and he goes to saying Napoleon and you know World War two and a whole bunch of bad stuff now as this going on you can see he's rushing to this like safe now I don't know if this is Mitchell Slate we'll get there later um, I, this is we don't know where this happens kind of thing but this is some guys running some safe some demons are in there he gets in the safe and it looks like the demons are in there with him kind of thing this is where we meet Mitchell Slate it's this guy right here um, currently he's talking to this homeless guy before he's about to get on this train um, I want to assume he's heading home to his wife, which he states he has, but it's like I said, he's not doing so great in the world, um, you know, he keeps relating to that, he's not happy, that kind of thing, the only keeping him, the only thing keeping him in this world is, is his wife kind of thing, um, <clears throat> that first couple pages that we saw that guy running in the safe and uh, this is an article that explains who that was and it says prominent banker loses everything in gambling scheme including city funds so it, 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 the story is kind of painting this picture there's not just a bad decision that affects them it also affects like the world kind of thing um, so eventually our dude Mitchell Slade he eventually gets on the the train we do see in his briefcase that he does have a picture of his wife but he also has some guns and some bullets, you know, so he's not your average, like, salesman kind of thing. Uh, eventually he gets on and the, he, had, you know, he ends up walking to a seat. He passes these two kids who we find out don't have any tickets. Um, it doesn't say when this is set, but I want to say it's set, like, 40s, 50s, something like that. Um, he, he finally does take a seat. A guy next to him asks for the paper that he's reading. You can see he's got the paper here, but he's not really reading the paper. He just had it for aesthetics. Um, he was kind of just in his thoughts, uh, thinking about what I told you about. These kids are trying to fake their, their tickets, and you see the usher is getting close. You can see over here that eventually he does start asking for their tickets. That uh, I want to say it's going to play a major part later on, but not so much now. Um, 
But eventually that guy asking about the paper, there's this conversation about, you know, there's nothing good in the paper, and it, it goes back and forth about all the bad things in the world kind of thing between this guy and our dude Mitchell Slade. Maybe it's anxiety that causes, I don't know, but all of a sudden you can see right here that all of a sudden it looks like a split in the world, and it looks like Mitchell Slade's running through some kind of dream world, and there's these crazy eyes that are coming in through some slits. We don't know, right? Um, but that does happen. Mitchell Slade's like, man, man, uh, you know, I'm not doing so good. Uh, I'll talk to you later. You know, dude next to me. And he ends up going back to his room because he wants to get to his briefcase to see his, um, you know, the, the wife and the kids kind of thing. It's the one thing that's grounding him in this world. And um, as he's, you know, like kind of heading back to where he was before he hears a whisper on the other side of the door he walks through the other side of the door and there's nothing there it's an empty room or it appears to be so at first he's like well what the hell is that and he's like oh i'm sorry i i, I you know i just i had to let some of this out and we hear that it's a guy that's speaking off in the distance and we see mitchell slade walks up to uh, if i can move my finger he walks up to him and he's like yeah i'm sorry if i startled you i was just trying to stretch out the next panel right here we have this it kind of looks like a whole bunch of tendrils or well, we don't really know um or do we because right after that bam we get this dude and so this dude starts like i'm not gonna say he comes after him he's talking to him the whole time now on the train it's not really him that's coming for him because you see he's gonna eventually get him it's not a matter of like chasing him down or anything but there's other stuff on the train that start trying to get to him. This is where we go back to the kids. The guy, Mitch, remembers the kids are right around the corner. He goes to go save them like the good guy he is. And it turns out there's some kind of weird monsters, demons. Who knows, right? Scares the crap out of him. He turns around. Um, you know, he ends up like punching one of them. They kind of disappear, fade away. I don't even know. Um, but eventually, like I said, this guy kind of gets a hold of him. And the next thing that Mitch, you know, he, he's not on a train anymore. It looks like he's in a, in a sane asylum, a padded room kind of thing. Um, it does look a lot like the guy's costume. He's in this, like, I mean, it kind of has, like, padded and textures. And, um, but eventually it's like this chasing. It has been since this started. But, you know, now Mitch is ducking and dodging. Um, weaving and you know bobbing through all this stuff trying to move around trying not to get captured kind of thing uh, the conversation just goes into the same thing you know it all goes into a bad decision or are you going to be the one that that you know takes this route to make that decision da, 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 da. this this monster you know um, padded room guy he explains that they, at this point it's too far to make a good decision kind of thing um, eventually we get the scene right here we get the spread up here and basically that monster guy says welcome to destiny's gate um, our Mitch Slade guy explains that man there's so many options of routes I can take and that's kind of the point each different route leads to different choices and the way our our bad guy says is um, that they're all pretty much bad you know there's some where you're, you're gonna it's gonna hurt you or you're gonna die a lot worse but they're all pretty much bad you know he's like just basically embrace the darkness and pick one you know um eventually mitch slade does kind of you know stop running and it, they have shown this thing a couple different times i'll try and it's right there that it looks like a machine or that that's been running um, it comes back when he was on the train, but eventually he grabs one of those dudes' rags and throws it in there. Um, this dude starts getting like dragged into it, and we see that the, all the rags get pulled off, and this is kind of what he looks like underneath. Or the rags were part of his skin, and he just ripped off all his skin. You know, either way, that's what he looks like now. Um, so we basically get this, and this is where it leaves us off at. It's just you know, Mitch all by himself picking a path he doesn't know where to go um the last thing he says i'm starting to think i might have gotten on the wrong train you think so buddy you think so but no, no i'm playing um they do give us a image from the next issue and it looks like mitch slade is just falling and there's all these like you know monster hands demons i don't know there is 
uh, detailed, you know, paragraphs for writer, artist, you know, um, assistant colors, the colors, there's some game, you know, I want to say game design because that's what it technically is, but there's some character designs and stuff like that. There's also the explanation on the 20th anniversary, you know, the trifold cover spread by Giuseppe Caffaro. Um, but that's basically it. That is the review. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect going into it. I just, I like the, the way the main cover looked. I like the name. And that's kind of what drag, drug me in. So I, I didn't know a lot about this going in. Now, after reading it, is it something I'm going to continue on with? Yeah, I was down with it. It has kind of a Cthulhu type of thing. You know what I mean? Even though I didn't, but it kind of does. Honestly, reading the article, it said that the, the game design, you know, was so rare and and it was so different from everything out there and honestly it's not um, it, this reminds me a lot of a game called The Evil Within and it was a fantastic horror survival game that you can play on Xbox and PS4 or maybe just Xbox don't quote me but it is a known game the story is fantastic but that's what this kind of reminds me of this dude was in regular reality and maybe through anxiety stress of everything that's going on in his life all of a sudden he blips out and he is in this weird world that he doesn't recognize. Um, it's almost like Evil Within, but in, within Evil Within it was part of the dude's like psyche. He was, you know, insane kind of thing. So this could be a little different where this guy is flipping through realities kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. It's For a first issue, I loved it. I thought it was great. The art was spectacular. Um, I don't know if I have any complaints. Maybe I should have went with the main cover. I'm not a huge Walking Dead fan, but I do like Negan. Um, but hey, guys, that's my review. Let me know down below what you thought of the story. Um, was this original for you? Let me know because it, it, I believe it wasn't for me, but it might be for you kind of thing. I don't know. Let's talk about it. Let me know down below. Did you like this? Did you not like it? Is it a pass? Is it a pickup? You know, are you going to go rush out to the store to get it? Let me know. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Um, more reviews on the way.